Do you like fantasy football and sports betting? Come join us here at the Parlay Fantasy Football Podcast, where hosts Matt, Shane, and Jason talk about fantasy players, lineups, and sports betting to help you compete and win championships. And of course, some extra cash. Let's jump right into the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Parlay Fantasy Football Podcast. Matt and Jason with you guys tonight. And if you are seeing on the old YouTube machine, we have a guest, one of our old buddies here that joins us every single year for mock drafts, Mr. Mark Hertel. But before these guys introduce themselves, we do have Shane tonight, okay? Uh, he Remember, guys, that's what, like we said last week now, he just had a baby, and he told us to start the show without him. So he will be on here in just a little bit. Uh, I think the, the baby is just not cooperating very well. So that being said, we just decided to start the show, uh, and he'll hop on in a second. So that means, uh, Mark, Jason, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing good. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, doing solid. Excited to be back. Always uh, looking forward to. I I never get to do fantasy related stuff um, in content form, so I look forward to this every single year. Always appreciate uh, you guys having me on. No, we love having you on, Mark. We appreciate your time tonight. Hey, like like Matt said, Shane's in daddy mode right now. <laughs> He'll come back whenever whenever the baby whenever the baby's asleep. But hey, glad to be back. We are one week away. Yes, yes, we are officially one week away from NFL football, a couple days away from college football. Um, remember, guys, now that we are partnered with Fantasy Six Pack, all of our content for YouTube is now going to be on their YouTube page, all right? So head over to Fantasy Six Pack on YouTube. Uh, give them a subscribe, guys. There's a lot of awesome things going over there. FantasySixPack.net is the website. You have draft strategies. You have cheat sheets. You have every single sport known to to man on their articles about DFS lineups. Uh, lots of fantasy banter. You can head over to their Discord page as well, Fantasy Six Pack. Ask any questions you want on any sports you want. And there is a person from Fantasy Six Pack that is going to answer your questions for you. Go over there. And remember, if you want to become an all-access member on Fantasy Six Pack, uh, you basically just subscribe and you are going to have our content for betting. You're going to have uh, the availability to get extra stuff with their draft strategies, their draft guides, their cheat sheets, um, their tiered rankings. Uh, they are a top five football ranking program with some of their staff over there. So it's pretty awesome. And we're just happy to be partnered with them. Tonight, our lineup, guys, is going to be a mock draft. The last mock draft we're going to do of the year. All right. The last one. And Mark is actually in a fantasy league with us. So it's good to have him on here, and it's always nice to, to not have the computers draft at every single slot. It's nice to actually get some, get some people in the actual draft room. Remember, guys, Parlay Fantasy Football Podcast. You can go over to any podcasting platform. You can click subscribe. We are keeping the brand open, our own brand, so head on over to any podcasting platform. You can subscribe, follow us. Leave a five-star review. It helps the show greatly. You can find Shane at Shane Parlay FF on X. By myself, at Matt underscore Parlay FF and Jason at Jason Parlay FF. But before we get into the news and notes, because you are going to go over that too, Mark, where can these guys find you as well? Because you do have a podcast as well, and it is very interesting. So Mark, I do, yeah. So uh, what started out as a podcast about two dads living life in the Midwest, uh, my buddy Sipe and I, we started a podcast a couple years ago, and it has now grown. Um, what used to be an audio podcast, similar to you guys, has become a video podcast. We uh, just updated all of our overlays, transitions. Uh, we finally have a consistent handle, all that sort of stuff. But basically, uh, it is now a group of four of us who do the show and yeah we talk about life in the midwest we talk about sports hobbies uh we debate various things like how to properly make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich um so <laughs> if you are interested in that uh it is called in the middle podcast so pretty pretty simple to remember and you can find us literally anywhere at itm so in the middle and then kansas so itm kansas 
Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, it, pretty much anywhere. You you type in ITM Kansas, you'll find us. That's that is freaking awesome. Um, okay, Jason, can you do me a quick favor, or Mark, one of you guys, while I play this drop, can you guys pull up all the news that's going on in the NFL? I know there are some things that we do need to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to play this drop. We'll get into the news. News and notes around the league. Who has it pulled up? Getting there. I don't have. I mean, I got sleeper alerts up. So there you <laughs> yeah. go. Well, let's Pull let's 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 kind of undress some of the big elephants in the room here. All right. Uh, you, you still have the Brandon Ayuk situation. And yes. Mark, since you are on the podcast now, we, we've kind of talked about it the last couple of weeks, but at this point in time, there's still nothing out. Kyle Shanahan said today, came out today and said, still nothing going on. Like, at, at what point? I mean, it's, it's to the point now where it's just exhausting, right? Do we kind of just lean that he's probably going to end up being a San Francisco 49er? Or... What, do you, what are your thoughts on this? Because now it's just, we've debated it for weeks and now it's just getting exhausting. So I want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, that's that's pretty much where I've fallen into with Ayuk, which honestly, I think for the league itself, it's good for the Niners to have all of their weapons. Um, I like not to disrespect, obviously, Debo and McCaffrey and Kittle and, and everybody that they have on that team, but Ayuk is their best receiving option. And you take him away from Brock Purdy and suddenly the Niners, instead of being a top tier NFC team, I truly think, yeah, they, they maybe struggle to even make the playoffs as loaded as they are everywhere else. So if Ayuk, you know, wants to just, cause he, he's still technically under contract. So just play out this year and then, you know, become a unrestricted free agent. And then you can pick where you want to go and not have to deal with the trade talks. I think he just ends up back in San Francisco, which is good for the league. Right. No. And I agree too. It's one of those things where I, they can't plug and play with Ayuk If they're going to, if they're going to put in Pierre saw, it's still going to be a decline in players to where I don't think it's going to be that, they can't basically put in a player and get his production out of them. So he's been offered more money by a lot of other organizations. He doesn't want to, for some reason, he doesn't want to do that. I think they're close on contract negotiations. It's just one of those things he's going to have to, he's just going to have to figure it out. Now, it's kind of a little, I mean, same topic. What does it do for fantasy value? Tell me, tell me what you think it does for fantasy value with, uh, this whole Ayuk situation. Does he? He per- currently, I, ha- I have I've dropped him back a couple ranks, right? Uh, where do you think this lands? Let's just say he stays the San Francisco 49er. Obviously, probably best case scenario for him, but no training camp, no practices, no game time. Does he slide back? Does Debo possibly move in front of him in your ranking? So I've actually been in mock drafts with the unsure nature of all of it. So like, for example, and we'll get into this when we actually do the mock draft is I had, you know, a a five grouping of Tyree kill CD lamb, and then the three running backs. Well, with all the CD lamb stuff going on, I've kind of pushed him out of my guaranteed spot. So yeah, I'm drafting at four tonight. I'm going to end up with one of those four, either Tyree kill or one of the three running backs. I, you can Debo are the same situation where I've been drafting Debo and essentially letting Ayuk go past me. But there will come a point where obviously if people are scared to draft him because he's not currently signed and, you know, I'm able to scoop him up. I I think technically he goes usually high third, maybe back third round. If it's the fourth or especially the fifth round, by all means, sign me up and I'll I'll wait for whatever happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm I'm pulling the trigger in the fourth, but Debo's the, my guy in that offense right now, unless I can't get Chris McCaffrey. Now, mm-hmm. what are we th- what are we thinking about um, the Jamar Chase situation that's kind of unfolded uh, here recently about the whole contract negotiations and is that just something that you think he's trying to get? Because I, I've heard rumors that he's not afraid to not play, right? So is he trying to get something like his best friend, JJ, or, I mean, what are the, what's, what's going on with that? Does that scare you? Cause typically he's going at what? Usually the one Oh 
103, 104, maybe 105 sometimes. In my opinion, that's a nicer situation than Ayuk from the standpoint of Ayuk could could end up somewhere else. He could end up on the Patriots, and yeah, he's not worth the value at that point as good as he is because he, you know, he's on a crappy franchise. Jamar Chase isn't going anywhere. The Burrow yeah. will not let Jamar Chase go anywhere. So, <laughs> y- you know, worst case scenario, you deal with a holdout for a game, maybe two, but otherwise Jamar Chase is going to be a league winner. I, it doesn't change my opinion on where I'm drafting him. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think there's, I have a hard time believing that he's not going to be playing in week one. I, I personally, I personally agree with you as well. Uh, this kind of sparked out of nowhere. I don't know where it all came from. Um, obviously, it's a real thing. Players want to get their money. We all know this. Uh, but like Mark alluded to, Joe Burrow and Jamar, they're, they're close friends. I do feel like a, something is going to get done or he's at least going to play uh, week one. I just don't see him. I, I can't see him being that kind of guy that will not play. But it does make me cautious. It does make me cautious because if you spend the draft capital at 103 or 104, 105, wherever it is, you're kind of wanting that, you know. You can't say that it wouldn't be in the back of your mind that you would be nervous if he does not do something. All I know is they play the Chiefs in week two, and if he did hold out week one, they're not going to let him miss the Chiefs game. So if if I'm Jamar Chase, I have all the power, even though you really don't need it because you still have, what, two years left on his deal. So right. I, right. I think he's being a little diva wide receiver at this point. But it, yeah, fact of the matter is he, he won't go past week one without playing. So right. we're, we're good. Right. The CD situation scares me more than Jamar Chase. CD, well, I think, could hold out for the entire yes. season because mm-hmm. he's he it's not like running backs where they're they're devalued and cd at the end of the season yeah he's an unrestricted free agent if they don't pay him so cd off my draft board right now (laughs) and well and the crazy part is is that's been going on for a while now like we've known about that you know this whole Mm -hmm. jamar chase stuff even if it has been going on for a while he was he was at training camp for a little bit whether he was practicing or not like it just kind of really ramped up in the last you know I don't know, four or five days, maybe a week at the most. Right. Shane, All right. Two Shane, things. I back. heard I heard the Ayuk stuff. Uh, Ayuk should 100%, 100% be drafted at the end of the second round. Um, doesn't matter what team he goes to. Even if he goes to Pittsburgh, he becomes the alpha at Pittsburgh. I think that's the worst landing spot you could end up with right now. Um, because he is essentially being like, I won't play for New England either. And New England's like, oh, we aren't going to trade for you if you aren't going to play for us. And since he's on his rookie deal, he has to play this year. Like, yeah, he yeah. is handcuffed to the fact that the league requires him to play. He's going to play. He's probably going to play for the 49ers. Take the, take the value that has fallen into everybody's laps with everybody reacting so heavily to this. Because he's either going to get traded or he's not. And if he gets traded, he's going to Pittsburgh and he's becoming the alpha in Pittsburgh. And if he doesn't get traded, he's with the Niners, which we all know is a good situation. And CD and Jamar, I'm more worried about CD than I am Jamar. Yep. And Jamar should 100% be drafted in the top five because, like Mark was alluding to, if they line up to the Chiefs, he hates us. I think he he is one of like the biggest proponents of like anti-Chief propaganda in the league. I don't think he would miss that game no matter how bad contract discussions are going. Yeah. And if you guys can see on the screen, well, we all we all know Shane's already a Chiefs fan. We we know that, but Mark is a big Chiefs fan as well. So they they know a thing or two about the Cincinnati team. They and they 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 know they know these guys pretty well. Look, I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> you guys you guys know me as being hot take. Mark, you know I yeah. I bring the fire. Not only and and Shane, don't freak out. This is not a jinx or anything like that because everything is injury abstaining, of course. Like, but. Not only do I think the Chiefs three-peat this year rather easily, I think the AFC has taken a Ooh. step back as a whole. I'm calling okay. under the season. If, oh. if we pass Baltimore and Cincy in the first two weeks, we're going to roll the rest of the way. The only game that would concern me of us falling asleep would be the Browns because it's late, and if the Browns have nothing to play for playoff-wise, we might sleep on their defense. 
in in a bad weather game. But I got Chiefs undefeated. Three Pete Patrick Mahomes goes down as the goat immediately following this season, despite fewer rings, because he will do what Brady has never done. <laughs> hey, we we are we we are predicting. I know at least Shane and I. I don't. I think Jason's kind of on board with this too. We are kind of uh, going to bat for thinking that the Chiefs are going to return to their their form a couple years ago with having the really super high powered offense. Uh, we're excited to see it because. Uh, it's just an amazing thing to watch. It's an amazing thing to watch. And they uh, have a top three defense. Like their yes. only their only loss on their starting eleven was Legarius Sneed. And I think Trent McDuffie's great. And while we wait for those rookies that we drafted to, you know, get better, we'll hold down the fort. And and they'll show up during the back half of the year. I agree. I agree. And Jason's Texans. They're going to be good. We're going to talk about them here in a little bit. Does anybody else have uh, any big news uh, before we take a break? Are you guys good? Since uh, we brought up CD, it does say he, they're having promising talks yep. for <laughs> owner Jerry Jones, but yeah, per Jerry, Jerry Jones, Jones is, is not to be per- believed. So listen, yeah, yeah, I didn't say I didn't say that bit because I don't want to give people false hope. <laughs> um, speaking of Mark's hot take, uh, the Chiefs are um, like above and beyond what any other team is to go undefeated this year, according to Vegas. So Mark, you're not too far off of what Vegas thinks is very possible. Throw five bucks on it. Just it's, what's yeah, it's going to hurt. It's plus 7,500 odds. So yeah. everybody else is plus 10,000 or higher and it's the Ravens and the Niners are plus 10,000. And then everybody else is higher by like double at least Vegas knows. They, they know something. They know something. All right, guys, we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a bit. This episode is brought to you by Nevin Eyewear. Upgrade your style and protect your eyes with Nevin Eyewear. Designed with precision and crafted for comfort, Nevin Eyewear offers a stunning range of sunglasses and optical glasses that blend fashion with function. Whether you're hitting the beach, driving, or just out for a stroll, Nevin Eyewear ensures you look your best while safeguarding your vision. Shop now and experience the perfect fusion of elegance and durability. Head over to ParleyPod.com and ParleyFF on YouTube. Click the affiliate link to get the best deals possible. Don't miss out on the latest trends. Again, ParleyPod.com and or ParleyFF on YouTube. That's N-E-V-E-N.com. Elevate your eyewear game today. Well, they called mock draft what were, what were we going to say Shane <laughs> you're muted oh Shane's muted I'm oh, not muted now uh, sorry I thought control D worked it did not um, what I said was well because I was thinking out loud, thinking I was muted, and I was like, "We need to rerun that ad because yeah, we do it's need no to longer on the, stuff up. <laughs> it's no longer on the parlay." Yeah. Oh. So that's just funny. I was like, "Oh wow, huh?" But, yeah, we we need to do. We're still working out the kinks. You know, Shane had had never really gotten a chance to talk about uh, partnering up with uh, Fantasy Six Pack because of the baby. We will get into the mock draft, but Shane, real quick before we jump into that, how excited are you with this? Oh, I am super pumped. The guys over at F6P are amazing. Uh, shout out to Joe, AJ, all the guys that have welcomed us so far. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm really pumped to work with this team. Uh, their data and stuff like that is literally next level. So it's really great to peel back the curtain. And, you know, it's always great to mesh mega minds together. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, a, there's a lot of things that we're still working out, a lot of details still coming, but we're super excited, uh, super excited for this opportunity. Uh, to be a part of Fantasy Six Pack and have our content over there with those guys. And yeah, there's there's a lot of great things to come. So that being said, guys, uh, we are going to be doing a mock draft. It's going to be a one quarterback, well, half point PPR, redraft league, one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, and six bench spots. Uh, I am drafting from the four spot, five spot. Mark is drafting from the four spot. Jason is at the 107 and Shane is at the 109. 
So if you guys can see on YouTube, it's, we have it on the screen right here. You guys can follow along with us. We'll kind of talk about each pick for a minute or so and then just keep moving on. Are you guys ready to start? Let's, Let's go. Let's do it. All right. Draft is started. So we got C.D. Lamb, Christian McCaffrey at 102, Justin Jefferson at 103. Mark, who are you going I don't think any of that would actually happen. But uh, like I said, I I would either take one of the three pack of running backs or Tyree Kill. And considering we're wa- running three wide receiver for this particular mock draft, uh, they have a little bit more value in my opinion. You want to be a little deeper, grab some high end guys. So this one's easy, Tyree Kill. Yeah, it's a fantastic pick. And to get, I mean, you guys all know the top, usually the top five picks, top six picks. Um, that's a great. Tyreek Hill falling to 104 is fantastic. Team one must not know, or they must know something we don't. Uh, all right. So this being said, I'm on the clock here at 105. Like Mark just said, and we kind of talked about it earlier, Jamar Chase, uh, I, don't think, I don't think he's going to hold out. I think he will be there for game one. It's scary at 105, but him falling to the 105 with the three receiver league, his elite talent, I've got to take my shot here. So I'm going to take Jamar Chase to 105. 106, B. John Robinson. Jason, you are on the clock. Yeah, since it's a three three wide receiver league, I'm gonna go with Amal Ross St. Brown. I like the volume in that offense. I it's just Kenny getting the end zone a little bit more, but safe bet. Yeah, it's safe, super safe bet. We're, we're, Shane, before you make your pick here, all three of you guys, would you guys be fine with Amon Ra going at the 104 let's say Tyreek goes at the 103 would you be fine with Amon Ra going in front of uh, Jamar Chase absolutely I think he's okay taking in front of Justin Jefferson at this point yeah. with the question marks that are around I think that Amon Ra like if you want the floor with one of those top you know four picks and you don't feel comfortable with the remainder that are left Amon Ra is one of the safest picks you can make at this point in the first round yeah I love it I love it. He's, I agree with you he's the new Devontae Adams, in my opinion. He, you yeah. know, oh, he's good. going to see a bunch of targets. He's going to get plenty of red zone looks. He, he'll give you, you know, 80 and a touch every week. Yeah. I like that. I like that comp. Shane, you are on the clock, my friend. Yeah. And I'm super salty about Amon Ra and AJ Brown going right in front of me. Uh, fun fact <laughs> the nine spot is the worst. Pl- I actually picked it specifically to talk about this. The nine spot is the worst spot to draft this year. Like it is, it is bona fide the absolute worst. But alas, I'm going to take Brees Hall here and see what rolls back to me. Um, you know, hopefully getting lucky and okay. something that wasn't terrible happened. Yeah. I mean, so. shoot, you took Brees Hall and then running backs just flew off the board. Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor at 111, Garrett Wilson at 112. Then on the turn, Puka Nakua at the 201. So team 12, Garrett Wilson and Puka, that's a good combo. Uh, and then Jameer Gibbs at 202, Kyron Williams at 203. So, yeah, you got yeah, a nice, nice, got a nice got a, pick got ahead of the run. Got ahead of the run was sick. And look, I love Marvin Harrison, but I'm going to take Drake London. Um, I think that London's guaranteed to see that, you know, explosive Atlanta offense increase. And I think that Arizona, while the offense will probably run through MHJ, I'm still a little hesitant to plant a flag there because he is a rookie. There is a significant learning curve between, you know, NCAA and the NFL. And he, he could come in and absolutely dominate, but building with needing points at wide receiver, considering I went running back first. Yeah. Definitely going to take the safer floor. I like that. Drake London to Shane, then MHJ right after Drake London at two Oh five, Jason, you are back on the clock. So I'm going with the receiving threat of the backfield. I think Travis Etienne is going to have a great year this year. Give me Etienne to be my running back one. Etienne to Jason off the board. Then Derrick Henry at the 207. So team six has Bijan and Derrick Henry. That's a filthy combo. Not going to lie. That, that is a pretty, that is a pretty sick combo. Um, I, you know what? This next pick here, I, I've been kind of, this has been a guy – we talk about it in fantasy all the time. If you, if you really like a guy, go out and get him. And I have been drafting this specific individual in a lot of mock drafts, and that's Nico Collins. I'm going to take Nico Collins, assuming that he is the wide receiver one in Houston. 
good rapport, got paid. Uh, I think he's going to see a lot of volume. And this being a three-wide receiver league, I like my combo of, of Jamar Chase and Nico Collins there. Mark, you're back on the clock. Okay, so I want to have a, a real discussion with you guys while I kill some time on this pick because right now I'm between two players, but I think you'll be shocked as to who those two players are. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a Chiefs homer, which naturally means that all Chief players get an automatic bump in my list. I think Isaiah Pacheco, like he has no competition in that backfield. It's going to be one of the highest powered offenses in football. Uh, great in the red zone, great out of the backfield, catching the ball. Isaiah Pacheco is a slam dunk here. But what I want to know from you guys, because you're way smarter than me, you do all the bets and that sort of stuff. You hit more often than you miss. I'm starting. I've been down on him all year, but literally over the last 48 hours, I am starting to get on the Josh Jacobs train. And here's Ooh. why. Here's the thought. Just two years ago, he was the rushing leader for the NFL, right? On a, on a hapless Raiders team. Then... After doing that in a contract year, they say, well, screw you, Josh. We're going to franchise you. We got a coach that's a buffoon. You know, he got fired midseason. The team is utter garbage outside of him, Devonte Adams and Max Crosby. Like name another player on the Raiders, like outside newly acquired Brock Bowers. Right. So in my opinion, it was perfectly acceptable as an athlete to be like, look, this team sucks. I just put it all on the line last year. Yeah. I don't give a crap this year. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to get my money and green Bay, a potential super bowl contender went out and paid him and said, you're going to be our guy. We're getting rid of the guy who's been here. And I think he's motivated not only to get back into, yeah, I want to be considered one of the elite guys, but also, Hey, he got his money and now he wants the championship. Like I have been slowly rising on Josh Jacobs, your guys' thoughts between those two players, or even just that thought in general. Well, I'm going to pause the draft real quick. So that yeah. way we can give this a little bit of convo here. Your reasoning with Josh Jacobs. I, I do agree with a little bit. Now I as well have been pretty low on him this off season, a little bit lower than, or not as low as what probably consensus is. For me personally, I think that Packers offense, I do think Jacobs is going to have some runs. I don't, don't get, don't hear what I'm not saying. I think he's going to have a pretty decent fantasy year, but for me, the new hotness of Jordan love, Jordan love getting paid. And then everything you hear about all the wide receivers on that roster that are just absolutely, you know, they all call themselves wide receiver ones. That's a, that's a quarterback's dream. There's no, there's no fighting for targets or anything like that. For me personally, out of those two picks, I'm taking Pacheco. I'm, I'm taking Pacheco all day. We have risen so high on Pacheco, that at least the three of us, this year. And I said it, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And I said, if Pacheco can 100% lock up all the running back touches, even third down roll, he's going to finish. He very well potentially could finish easily inside the top five. Do I think Josh Jacobs has that upside? I, I Personally, I don't. I don't think he's got that upside to finish in, inside the top five. I think Pacheco has all the gifts in the world to finish inside the top five. And from my personal opinion, I'm taking Pacheco right there. Let me echo Matt's last statement. Pacheco, I feel like should be up here with a chan or a chain. I don't understand the infatuation with these two above him uh, with the lack of, you know, challenge for the roles in that offense and what we project to be a better offense. I know that the Chiefs tend to pass the ball in the red zone. It's whatever. The dude's going to eat and he's probably going to get more receiving yards and receiving like receptions this year than he's ever had in his career because there is no one else that they feel comfortable turning to. So much so that they literally are using a UDFA as their backup running back right now. Actually, two of them. So like it's insane that they that their value is there. It's screaming everybody in the face, and yet we just neglect it because of the two shiny things that are in front of you. Jacobs, I am concerned about, and it's not because of Marshawn Lloyd, but it is. LaFour loves to use two RBs. And that's my big hesitancy in that offense because, like, yeah, Jacobs is amazing, but they always use two RBs. And if they don't this year, it would be an outlier. But in his past and in the coaching tree in general, 
they use two RBs. There is a one A and a one B that comes in as a change of pace, or the the they just don't let the guy be the workhorse. Jacobs should be the workhorse, but I don't think that they will let him. Despite correct the money, me, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's from the McVay coaching tree, correct? Lafleur. Yeah, yeah. And who, McVay, who like, always wrote? Who always girly. rides one until right. there's a second one, and then it's a split backfield <laughs> until that guy goes somewhere else, and then. Yeah, so here's here's kind of my final thought on which, by the way, just a uh, you glossed over real quick. I would normally absolutely slam a chain here, but because I have Tyree kill, I don't want to double up on dolphins, which is why we're having this conversation. Um, my thing with Josh Jacobs is we've also seen in plenty of offenses, plenty of years where those wide receivers, they just happen to get tackled at the one. And I think coming from the McVay system who they've always produced high end running backs. Yeah. They can do design plays similar to the chiefs and they can get cute on the goal line. But I also think Matt LaFleur trying to get to a super bowl is going to be like, look guys, we're on the one let's just punch it in with Jacobs. Like that's what we brought him here for. And that's, that's where I think a lot of the value of Jacobs is going to come from is that inside the, not even the five inside the three. And it's just, yep. Here you go, buddy. We're going to give you two cracks at it. If not, we'll do, yeah, some cute little tricksy play and and try to pass it to one of our, you know, awesome receivers or whoever. But I, I'm just saying, keep your eye on Josh Jacobs. Might be the story. Oh, yeah. But uh, that being said, I'm, yeah, I'm smashing Isaiah Pacheco here. Like, it's not even a discussion. Resume. Draft is resumed, boys. So, Mark took Isaiah Pacheco there. Uh, and then after Pacheco, we got Devonta Adams at the 210, Devon Achan at 211, Chris Olave at 212, Josh Jacobs, there you go, at 301, Josh Allen at 302, first quarterback off the board. Then Brandon Ayuk fell to the 303, and normally we do see him going eh, typically at the tail end of the second round. Mark, you were back on the clock with Tyreek Hill and Isaiah Pacheco on your roster. Yes. Um, and yeah, just for ADP purposes, Travis Kelsey, Sam Laporta there. I like both of them. I, I think the third round is a safe place to take either one. Obviously, I just grabbed Pacheco again. Don't want to double up on the Chiefs. Um, and while I like Sam Laporta, I would prefer if he was the one in the offense like Travis Kelsey, as opposed to, you know, the two or depending on uh, Williams pops, you know, maybe even falls to the three, but we had the conversation about Debo and Ayuk. He's next best available player. Ayuk is not currently, you know, quote unquote on the Niners. This is the Debo smash to pair with Tyree kill. Dang it. Dang it. And Mark. he's going to, and he's going to also me. run the football because CMC, Which, just so you know, Matt, you said I sniped you. Normally this is the Nico Collins pick. So, in a way, you snipe me just around early. <laughs> I love I love Nico Collins. I've been drafting him as, as much as I possibly can in, in league. So, um, okay, Mark went, went Debo Samuel. Uh, it's a great pick. Uh, I love it there at the 304 there. Uh, I'm on the clock here. I've got Jamar Chase, Nico Collins. Looking at running backs, you know, this being a three wide receiver league, um, I think, honestly, I can hold off on running backs. I'm probably going to go another wide receiver here. Looking at the board, I have Mike Evans, Jalen Waddell, DJ Moore, DK Metcalf. I, I, I'm half tempted to take Malik Neighbors here because I do think that he is going to be an absolute beast this year. But I'm going to take Jalen Waddell. I mean, come on now. Come on now. Give me Jalen Waddell to pair with Nico Collins, Jamar Chase. I'm ecstatic about my receiving core. I've got my three high-powered wide receivers locked up on my roster, and I'm super happy about that. Jalen Hurts at the 306. Jason, you are back on the clock. I love to call this guy Garbage Time Mike because he has won me so many football games in the fourth quarter where these games mean absolutely nothing. Him and Baker have got something going on there, and I think that only continues. Give me Mike Evans. That was spot-on analysis. Yeah, Matt, Mike Evans I'm so upset with you. you. I love it. Or did you, you see? I wanted you Waddle want? so bad. <laughs> I was over here like, Waddle's going to fall to me. Waddle's going to fall to me. <laughs> I'm just going to waddle my way into this guy. No, no. Uh, waddle, by the way, has huge touchdown regression probably in the future, considering the fact that he was expected touchdowns-wise. 
supposed to score six last year and he scored four. I don't foresee that happening again. I know Tyreek Hill is, you know, the beast that he is, but Waddle is going to get his this year and he's going to have a bounce back year. So yeah, I love that pick. I was the fact that he's available in the third round is really great and a cornerstone piece to build your team around. However, I am going to go DK Metcalf, Matt, because I have questions about Stefan and DJ and I would love to trust Daniel Jones, but there's a chance that Malik Neighbors falls to me again here. So we'll see what happens. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, he did. He did. So after Shane took DK Metcalf, Patty Mahomes off the board, that is the second, second quarterback or third quarterback off the board. Sam Laporta at 311, DJ Moore at 312, Rashad White at 401, Cooper Cup at 402, Stephon Diggs at 403, Shane. You're back at it. Yeah, and I already forecasted my pick here. So, Malik, welcome to the team, buddy. Yeah, I, I really do like that. I actually think Malik's going to have a pretty big year as long as Daniel Jones. Yeah, I mean, you've seen him in the preseason. Obviously, those quarterbacks can't throw an accurate ball to save them lives, and he still goes up and grabs the ball. Like, he's an athletic freak. I've actually risen on him a fair amount. Maybe not as much as some of the other analysts out there, but a fair amount I've risen up on him on my board. So, Lamar Jackson, right after Shane took Malik at the 405. Uh, Jason, you're back on the clock. Yeah, I'm expecting a big-time year out of this guy, especially with his target share that he got in the offense last season. With Only with a healthy quarterback, I think he can top it. Give me Michael Pittman. Uh, Michael Pittman off the board at 406. I love me some Michael Pitty, some Pitty mm-hmm. Pitty. Devon, Devonta Smith off the board at 407. I am back on the clock. You know, typically right here, boys, not going to lie. I mean, I'm not going to do it because I have Nico Collins, but you guys know that I've been pounding the drum as well for Tank Dell, and he would be my normal pick in the selection right here. But I've got Nico. Don't want to double up. I also kind of like T. Higgins, but I have Jamar Chase, so not doubling up there either. I'm going to look at running backs here. Guys, this running back here, I've actually risen up. I've risen up on this guy, too, in the past probably five to five to six days. That's Kenneth Walker. That's Kenneth Walker. I think Kenneth is going to have a pretty solid year this year. And as my RB1, I'm happy taking him right there at the 408. So give me Kenneth Walker. Mark, you're back on the clock. So anyone watching the video on YouTube is wondering why I keep shaking my head in disbelief. <laughs> uh, so first of all, if you ever draft on sleeper, you know, the computer does dumb things like take backup quarterbacks way too early and stuff like yeah. that. And so team six did the correct thing, which was stacking Devonte Smith with Jalen hurts who they took in the third yep. was not yep. anticipating that at all. Cause he was down the, uh, the ADP board. And then when Matt started talking running backs, I was like, Oh, of course he's taking James cook here, which means Ken Walker is going to fall right into my lap. Nope. Matt's like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already, I gotta do it once. I gotta do it once, Mark. A little bit here. Uh, I do enjoy the fact that Trey McBride, Mark Andrews, and Dalton yeah. Kincaid are all still on the board. Um, granted, none of the three teams in front of me currently have a tight end, so it's entirely possible I miss out on any of those guys. But for me, there's a slight, slight tear break at running back between James Cook and Alvin Kamara. I already have Tyree Kill and Nebo Samuel kind of starting my core. I might as well just continue to go with, you know, the high powered offenses. I think the Saints are going to be bad, which is why I'm going to lean James Cook here and we'll we'll settle even though I wanted Ken Walker. Yeah, I, it was between those two, Mark, to be honest with you. I, I like the production that I think James Cook is going to have this year. I think he's going to get quite a bit of volume. Um, but I've, I've risen on Kenneth Walker. He's moved up in my boards quite a bit. And I think he's going to be a, a solid player this year. So, But I do like the James Cook pick there. Well, you survived. Two of the tight ends did go. Trey McBride went right after you took James Cook. Then Alvin Kamara went. Mark Andrews. Then on the swing, 5-0-1. T. Higgins off the board, then Joe Mixon, C.J. Stroud, another quarterback off the board. Mark, you're back on the clock. I am, I am. And uh, again, if computer was smart, the Josh Allen team would have taken Dalton Kincaid instead of Alvin Kamara, and then I might have ended up with uh, both of them, put Alvin in my flex. Uh, But again, because I took James Cook last round, I'm not going to double up. That is not a strategy I like to employ. Even though I think Dalton Kincaid is going to be 
the Travis Kelsey for the Bills. I, I think he will be their quote unquote wide receiver one. Matt, you brought him up earlier, and this is the time to take him. It's Tank Dell. Yeah, I like that. I really like Tank Dell. Like that's why I'm to be honest, I'm okay taking him in the fourth round just because I think he provides that much value. Uh and but yeah, him falling to the fifth round is on fire. Come on. <laughs> Well, in this situation here, there's still quite a few wide receivers that I do like. Um, I'm okay with taking one next round if, if one of them falls to me. Running back here, like Mark said, in my opinion, there's a tear break. Uh, and there's, there's honestly a few I'm okay with being as Marby too. So in this certain situation, I am going to snatch my tight end here. And it is a big tear break. I'm going to take Dalton Kincaid. You guys know my love affair for Dalton Kincaid. I'm keeping him in like three of my leagues. Uh, I think he's going to be have a big year for Buffalo and potentially be the, the top target there. Uh, and I'm all about Josh Allen throwing him the ball. So give me Dalton Kincaid. Zay Flowers off the board at 506. Jason, you're back on the clock at 507. I don't know if I've been doing this a lot, but I'm usually getting in this situation when I do draft Pittman and I'm getting to the fifth and sixth round and I'd look at AR staring me in the face. Do uh, it. Damn, do I stack them right here? And you know what? For the sake of this, I am going to stack him right here. I think yeah. AR is going to be a smarter quarterback this year and maybe not get concussions on the four-yard line and put his shoulder down into a safety. But at the same time, we'll see what happens. I think he's going to have a breakout year, and especially if he stays healthy. Aaron Jones off the board at 508. Shane, what you got, bud? Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and slap together a stack here. Um, you know, it's the trend. I'll take Kyle Pitts. I think that he is a significant uh, step above the remaining tight ends as far as what this offense could produce. I know that Kittle was there, and I did think about doing that instead. But Kittle being 30, that offense being in flux, if Ayuk stays, Kittle's role is going to remain the same. And, you know, he's going to have one big boom week. And then you aren't going to hear from him for three weeks. And I just don't want to have to manage that in a season long league. Fantastic, though, for best ball. And then Pickens yeah, so went. Question. Yeah, what's up? You said go with the stack. I assume you were referring to your earlier pick of Drake London, in Correct. which case, obviously, they both can't get points on the same play. What's your, what's your strategy there? I'm curious. Uh, encapsulating the entire Atlanta passing offense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which I'm guessing you assume is going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, I think it will be above league average. And I think that if Drake London is not the recipient, it will be Kyle Pitts with a little splash of Darnell Mooney. But I think that between the two of them, they will share about 54% of the target share. Ooh. Ooh. And Damn. I'm wow. completely okay with it. Like, that's not even in, like, I mean, we saw one of the worst iterations of football last year with this team. And London had a, what was it, 22% target share, and Pitts had an 18% target share when he was on the field. So, like, to imagine that a better coach is going to come in with a better quarterback and Pitts isn't going to see a slight uptick, considering the fact that he's already the number one target, yeah, I'll go ahead and eat those coffee beans. <laughs> I mean, those coffee beans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then catch I'm, everybody I'm, up. Yeah, catch so everybody beans, up. Pickens went after my pick. Amari Cooper, who also was on my list. Uh, George Kittle. Uh, Christian Kirk, who I'm following on. Uh, DeAndre Swift, who's, yeah, who's 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 going to be the lead back in Chicago. And David Montgomery. And then, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and smash the uh, lead running back in Arizona, James Conner. Yeah, you know, everybody's – yeah, I do too. I absolutely love it, man. I feel like he is – being kind of slept on, although he has risen in ADP of late. Uh, I don't know if it's due to injuries from other teams. I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but he, at one point in time, not too long ago, he was basically forgot about. I mean, he was going in like the, the eighth round as a starting running back, and we all know what James Conner could do. I know he's hurt or gets hurt a lot, and he's getting older, but he's still the RB1 on a good offense. So great pick, Shane. Great pick. Keenan Allen off the board next, 605. Jason, you're back on the clock. Yeah, this is this one's easy for me. I'm going to solidify my flex position at the moment. Give me Scary Terry. I think with Jaden Daniels in that offense, he's the wide receiver one there. So downfield threat. He if he maintains the target volume he did last year, 
then, hey, who knows what can happen in that offense. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, all right, in this position right here, I'm on the clock. Uh, Evan Ingram went right to pick after uh, Jason there. I'm back on the clock at the 6.08. Uh, you know, looking at the board, there's still I, there's still some players I'm cool with, really, straight up. I like I like Roman Dunze right here, but I think there's players I like better. And normally here, Mark, I would take the quarterback that you are going to keep, that you are keeping this year in our Yahoo League. Uh, but me, I think you mean Allen, <laughs> which he said he's not keeping him. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Normally, I'd be taking Kyler Murray. Right thought here. you were going to go with a stack here. <laughs> no, I am going with the stack. I oh, am going to okay, go Joe. Okay. I am going to go Joe Burrow. I there like stack with Jamar Chase, but hmm. I wholeheartedly love the uh, the the Kyler Murray option as well. Yep. Uh, so so yeah, great pick. That it, it, I I was assuming you were going to do that. Uh, Normally, yeah, this is right around the time where I look for Kyler Murray. He's one of my favorite draft picks. And especially since uh, Team Six once again sniped me, they got me Devonta Smith last couple rounds. And then uh, Evan Ingram, for me, represents the absolute last of the tight ends before you fully punt the position. Um, So he was going to be my pick, but he's gone now. I could go Kyler Murray, but here's the deal. Team Three has CJ Stroud. Team Two has Josh Allen. I'm willing to see if team one takes them or not, because there are other quarterbacks I can grab, um, you know, Tua to stack with uh, Tyreek. Obviously, Jordan Love, I think, is going to do great things this year. Even, yep. you know, someone super late like a Jared Goff or whatever. I am perfectly content with with any of those late round quarterbacks. So for me, I am kind of looking at, you know, I, I have my three stack of wide receivers. So now it's like, OK, who? Who can win me a week here? Who can absolutely win me a week? And there's one guy in this league right now who's currently faster than the guy on my team, Tyree Kill. And that's Xavier Worthy. I'm I'm gonna take Xavier Worthy because hey, even though I got Isaiah Pacheco, I like when I I'm not likely gonna start Xavier Worthy anywhere, but in the event of whether it's a bye week or an injury or something like that. I think, yeah, even if he catches two passes, but one goes for a 70 yard touchdown, I want to have that upside to combat with my, my floor of Tyree kill Debo Samuel Pacheco cook. That's why I went with worthy. Like it. I really do. I like that pick. I don't mind the pick at all. Ramondre Stevenson went right after uh Mark there at the six nine. So Ramondre went at six ten. Calvin Ridley off the board. That's rising up in ADP. Uh, that's another wide receiver that gets slept on a lot. Then Dak Prescott. So team team one. Mark went with Dak over Kyler. Yeah. Uh, and then Najee Harris, off. <laughs> Rom- Romo Dunze, and Chris God went off the board. Max, Mark, you are back on the clock, and I'm assuming yep, we know it's, who's it's not that. even a thought. It's Kyler Murray. Yeah, I like that. Man, that's that's. That's crazy. I should probably go running back here. I only have one, but there is a receiver on the board that is still a fire pick for me. And being how my three receivers are already selected in my spot. I'm taking Rasheed Rice, man. I'm taking Rasheed Rice. The the suspension stuff hasn't come down yet. We don't think it's actually going to happen this year. And if it does, it might be midseason. But as my fourth wide receiver, I'm fine with it. If he needs to sit on my bench, he can sit on my bench. I thought so, about him with my last pick, but again, that's why I explained, hey, I want the upside of a weak winning player. Rasheed Rice is the Amon Ra of the Chiefs. Xavier Worthy is the Jamison Williams. And yeah, that's that's why I took Worthy over Rice. But, but otherwise, yeah, it, Rice probably would have been the reach there based on how my team would have been built based on other picks. Yeah, yeah. Jaden Reed, right off the, right off the uh, board, Right after my Rasheed Rice pick at 706, Jason, you're back up. Yeah, so I'm going up for a home run hitter that performed well in his short time of starting last year. Give me Zamir White. Even though the offense scares me. Running back. It's a scary offense, but he is an RB1. And Mm -hmm. if he's going to get the volume that we we think he's going to get, who knows? He's going to have He'll, he'll have some spike weeks. Keon Coleman off the board at 7.08. Keon, Keon, Shane, you're back on the clock. 
Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and just wait on my quarterback. <laughs> mm, actually, no, I'm not. I'm looking at the teams behind me, <laughs> and only one of them has a quarterback. I'm going to hop on this train before it gets rolling too far. Uh, give me Jordan Love. I was going to slam Tony Pollard here. If he gets back to me, that'll be sick. <laughs> and he wow. did. And he uh, did. So. Uh, yeah. Tennessee offense is completely slept on way too hard. Tony Pollard, they, I know that's 1A, 1B situation there. But TP looked really great in the second half of the year coming back from his injury. You know that when these guys come back from a major injury, it takes a while to get ramped up. We saw it. We saw it happen, and everybody's discounting it. TP is still a dude, and he, there's no way that this offense is anything as mediocre as it was last year, even with Will Levis still at the helm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like it a lot, Shane. I agree with you 100%. So after Shane took Jordan Love, Raheem Mostert went off the board, then Deontay Johnson, Jonathan Brooks, at the 712, Brock Purdy on the swing at 801, Caleb Williams off the board, Jordan Addison at 803, Shane took Tony Pollard, Zach Moss then at the 805, and Jason, you're back up. We all know my love for him. I just hope Deshaun Watson can get him the football. The most athletic, one of the most athletic tight ends in football. Give me David yeah, and you, Joku. You love you some David and Joku, that's for sure. Uh, Jason, David and Joku at 806, then. Lad McConkey, old lad off the board at 8.07. Hey, Chiefs fans, real quick. Hollywood Brown, how bad was it? Oh, he's he'll be back by week three at the latest. Week three. Probably week two if okay. he really wants to. Like, if he, if he feels good. They, he didn't have to have surgery, which was the main key. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's upper body, so that doesn't affect what he's known for, which is his speed. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm going, I'm going wide receiver here again. I'm going wide receiver. Give me, give me BTJ. I have yet to really draft him in any mocks at all, but here recently I've heard that he is really getting the coach's attention. The coaches are really starting to love BTJ, and he could be one of those wide receivers, like we alluded to earlier, weak winning receivers by midseason. You, you, you don't really know. I'm going to take my chance on it, see what he can do. So give me BTJ at the 808. Uh, Mark, you're back on the clock. Oh, hold on, Matt. Matt, real quick. BTJ, beat writers are saying that BTJ and Gabe Davis are on the field in two wide receiver sets, and Christian and Christian Kirk is not. So Ooh, even that better. is that is even a better. massive tidbit of like information that's just getting completely slept on because he's not coming off the field and Christian Kirk is. Kirk should be falling and BTJ should be probably going in the seventh round at the minimum. Love it. Get him the ace of the steal. Mark, what you got? Just going to write that down real fast. So, <laughs> uh, so looking at the board, um, again, I said I'm totally happy to punt the tight end position. Um, it, Brock Bowers, like, yeah, could he be the next Sam Laporta? Maybe. I am intrigued by Jake Ferguson, particularly from the standpoint of, especially if CD does not play, I think Jake Ferguson, not only is he the number one red zone target, but he then becomes even more of a focal point in the offense. However, two teams in front of me already have their elite tight ends. All I got to do is hope team two doesn't take them and it's a computer. So odds are it's taken Brock Bauer. So I'm going to continue to solidify my running back room. I'm going to go ahead and take Javante Williams, who has gotten all the run in the preseason as the starter. It doesn't look like he has any competition in the backfield, you know, for Sean Payton. And that paid off uh, behind me when Nick Chubb, uh, Jackson Smith, and Njigba, who I, it, that's a sleeper that I love. Jalen Warren, Hollywood Brown, Brock Bowers, as I predicted, team two taking, and then Brian Robinson. So yeah, might as well take him. Jake Ferguson, potential number one for Dallas if CD doesn't play. We've been rising on him quite a bit. Yeah, he was one of the most targeted tight ends in the NFL in the red zone last year. And yep. yeah, I'm a huge Fergie fan. Uh, yeah. And hey, Fergie. whenever Fergie. he does catch the ball, I gotta say, Fergie Ferg, let me love you long time. Yeah, Fergalicious season, <laughs> baby. So delicious. Uh, all right. So after Mark took Javonta Williams, Nick Chubb, or you already said it. Yeah, yep. those guys are all off the board. Then Mark took Jake Ferguson there. Looking at the board here, I still only have one running back. 
again, there's like three or four guys I'm totally cool with uh, as my RB2. I am actually going to go RB, though, just to solidify another starter. Again, he lines up as my RB2. I'm going to take Devin Singletary. I think he's going to be the starter right off the bat, at least, in, in New York. If he can give me some spike week games, I'm cool with it. I'm still going to draft some running backs later on here in this draft. So give me Devin Singletary. Austin Eckler off the board at 906. Jason, you're back on the clock. Yeah, I'm going to do a boomer bust play right now. Uh, give me Christian Watson. Hopefully that hamstring can stay healthy and is going to be all right. But hey, boomer bust play right here. You son of a bitch. Yeah, uh, Christian. Hey, Shane, just straight up, though, straight up. If I didn't take Devin Singletary, I was going another wide receiver. It was going to be Christian Watson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the value there is insane. I mean, the 6'4", gigantic Megatron clone exists in the ninth round. That's stupid. Uh, I don't care that his hammies haven't held up. If, if he even feels kind of right this year and gets to play a full season, then, yeah, it's going to be boom season all over again. Plus, that would have been a six stack, and I'm really upset with you. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> I'm going to take another boom or bust guy, and I don't know which one I want. I don't know which one I want. <laughs> let me go with. Let me go with the guy that I know is the alpha in the room. And that's Cortland Sutton. Cortland. Yeah, I was going to wait because he's probably going to fall to me anyways. But you know the value there of Cortland Sutton. Oh, Nix looks tight. And JMO fell to me anyways, so sick with it. We're just gonna tag that and move on. But yeah, both those guys are huge boom bust plays. Cortland Sutton had a ton of touchdowns last year because he was the only player in Denver. And yeah, we all have heard great things about JMO this year in the offseason. So we'll expect Man. that to continue. Uh after my pick from Cortland Sutton went to uh uh Tajay, Trey Benson, Ezekiel Elliott, Gus Edwards, Blake Corum, and then I smashed JMO. And then Team 8 took their backup tight end, Dallas Goddard, which in the 10th round is insane value for Goddard. Yeah, so right here, I'm going to solidify another starting running back that can, that's going to start the season. We don't know what's going to happen with Nick Chubb, but give me drum for it. Bang or bang. Son of a gun. I was not expecting, Shane, after you took Cortland Sutton to see all those running backs fly off the board like that. I wasn't either. I, I 100% uh, thought James was going to And because he normally here, like, I would have tagged up Zach Charbonnet, but I've got Kenneth Walker already. I don't want that. I mean, I'm cool with this. I'm going to take Chase Brown here. I'm cool with it. I know Javonta Williams is probably the dude, but Chase Brown offers a lot of upside. Another player that is boomer bust. The way I look at running backs this year as well, like if I don't get one of the top tier guys that plays basically all three downs, running backs are kind of a crapshoot. There's going to be two or three that play for each team, I feel like, this year and for the foreseeable future. So if I can get some running backs on my roster that can provide potential upside, boomer bust weeks, I- I'm cool with it. So give me Chase Brown right there. Mark, you are back on the clock at 10.09. So after... <sighs> I think it was Jason's pick. I very quickly just scrolled down, queued a couple players, and out of the eight players I queued, only two made it back to me. So I was kind of annoyed at the amount of snipage that was going on. Uh, So right now, I'm actually between two guys. Matt, you brought up one. uh, That's Zach Charbonnet. If something happens to Ken Walker, obviously he becomes the dude. Um, And I am hurting out running back. I, I do have more wide receivers. So for the balance of the team, it makes more sense. However, with the recent turf toe announcement to uh, Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir might get more run, particularly at the beginning of the season, which again, my starters are good to go. So I'm looking for guys to pop, looking for guys who I can potentially trade after one week or two weeks, try to get some value back for them, even if they, they personally don't crack my starting lineup. So based on that information, the injuries already happened for Shakir to crack. Charbonnet has to hope Ken Walker gets injured to see the field. We'll take the cure here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that pick. I really do. Jared Goff off the board at 10-10. Jaden Daniels off the board 10-11. I kind of sneaky really like that. If you, I'm sure you guys probably agree with me or thinking the same thing. If you're a guy that goes out and you get like a Dak Prescott or um, a Tua Tonga Biola, like a lot of people – Drafting two quarterbacks isn't really necessary unless you have a guy that 
you're unsure of, I guess more Tua than anything. Mm-hmm. To stack to have a second quarterback like Jaden Daniels is a pretty fire pick. But yeah, I like that. TJ Hawkinson at the ten twelve. Adonai Mitchell at the eleven oh one. Then Curtis Samuel, Romeo Dobbs eleven oh three. Mark, you're back up. And look at that. Zach Charbonnet made it back to me. So uh we're just gonna smash that pick and solidify yeah. my running back room. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um I misspoke earlier. I said Javonta Williams, Chase Brown was Javonta Williams back up, but I'm sorry. I meant, I meant to say Zach Moss. I think Zach Moss is going to be the guy, but Chase Brown offers awesome upside. So that's why I took him there. It's 10 to 8. I'm on the clock here at the 11.05, and I'm, a scrolling, I'm scrolling down the board on running backs, guys. There's a couple that I do like. I like Jalen Wright, but I'm not going to take him. Give me Ty Ty Chandler, baby. Give me Ty Chandler at the 11.05. I think that is a running back that is buried in ADP. I think he, he's definitely going to see the field. And we all know the history of Aaron Jones. He has been getting hurt recently in the last, last couple of years. And Ty Chandler is a very serviceable running back that can come in and play an every down role. So give me Ty Chandler. J.K. Dobbins off the board, 1106. Jason, you're back up. Yeah, so I'm going to go for a receiver on a team that nobody really liked last year or loved. Kind of Debo-ish in a way. Give me Xavier Leggett. We have no idea what he can do, but he's got that body self to be a stud receiver in this league, so he might find something. Love it. Xavier Leggett off the board. Chuba Hubbard next at 11.08. Shane, you went back on the clock. Matt, I was muted, and it was a good thing because I totally MF'd you on the Ty Chandler pick. Uh, <laughs> Ty Chandler has been my dude. I've been pounding the drum for all off season. If you guys tuned into any of our shows before, you know that I am a huge fan of Ty Chandler. That speed is just absolutely explosive. <laughs> Love you. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of looking at the board and kind of looking at what I have, and I have a pretty balanced team right now, which means I want to take a shot on a player. But I was scrolling, and I didn't love kind of what was available immediately on the board. So I did a little scrolling down, and Rico Dowdle is still there. Let me go ahead and put Dowdle in the uh, you know bench spot and queue up that nice little depth. I think Rico has a chance to be the every down back for Dallas. You know, then one thing that Zeke brings is the ability to pass block. So maybe he comes off during pass blocking, but. I think Dowdle will handle the majority of the touches it's themselves. And then uh, backup tight ends going off the board. We had Tyler Lockett, Justin Herbert, Trevor Lawrence in the 11th round is crazy. Uh, yeah, Jacoby Myers. Feeling. Yeah, Jacoby Myers, Pat Fryermuth, Cole Komet off the board here. And I'm going to tag wide receiver here. Let me go for the uh, guy who will probably be a focal point of an offense. You know, it's a little ugly. He's not the sexiest pick, which is why he's down here. But he should probably be having a little more respect to his name. That's Josh Palmer. Oh, Jay Palm. Jay Palm off the board. That's dude. <laughs> yeah, right dude. <laughs> For years. Uh, Rashid Shahid off the board at 12.05. Jason, you're on the clock. And if you are seeing on the screen, for some reason, it's not letting me scroll down past the 12th round. Uh, we do have 14 rounds. So... We'll just make sure that we read them off for, for the people. Jason, you're up. Yeah, I'm going with the college football rushing leader last year. Just in case uh, something happens to James Cook, give me some Ray Davis action. Ray Davis. I love that board. pick. I actually love I that. I don't mind the report, The reports out of Bill's camp is that Ray Davis looks like the real deal. Mm-hmm. And he is probably going to be the guy at getting the end zone carries if it's not Josh Allen because they do not trust James Cook to carry – their groceries out to their car. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> team. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. Sorry. He's going to get wow. the touches. Hey, just, Mark. I hate him in Mark. the red zone for some reason. I don't understand it. <laughs> Bazinga. Bazinga, Mark. Bazinga. <laughs> um, all right. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm still looking at running backs just because it's intriguing. The board is intriguing right now. There are still actually a few running backs that I do not mind. I'm very tempted to take Jalen Wright. We all know the speed that he brings. We all know that what Miami loves to do, and that's speed football. 
Javon A. Chan, I think for Jalen Wright to get some playing time, Javon A. Chan would have to get hurt. Uh, Raheem Mostert would have to get hurt. They're both going to have play. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually at this point right here, it's, it's a little bit of a reach, but I'm going to handcuff. I'm going to handcuff one of my running backs, and that's Devin Singletary. I think when Tyrone Tracy comes back from his little tiff, his little injury, I'm going to go ahead and lock him up on my roster just so that way I have somebody that I know for a fact that I can plug and play if one of those starters go down. So give me Tyrone Tracy. Mark, you're up on the clock. I love it. Uh, so real fast, can you um, – it, it was it Shane that was uh, giving the blurb about Brian Thomas? Can you repeat that blurb one more time for me? Uh, <laughs> Brian Thomas – and Gabe Davis are the players lining up in two wide receiver sets for Jacksonville. Christian Kirk is leaving the field for those sets. So it oh, is. So Gabe what you're Davis. telling me is uh, Gabe Davis is on the field at all times. And Basically, uh, yeah. They want him to be point. the future. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm taking Gabe Davis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely <laughs> pick. That for the crowd. Great pick. Yeah, Tugboat, Lovely. Tug, Tugboat Gabe is definitely in play this year. Yeah, 100%, man. That's such a good pick there at the 12th round. He is, again, like he's just another one of those players that's been buried in ADP and in leagues because everybody's so fresh and new on the hotness of BTJ and everybody and their mom thinks that Christian Kirk is still the dude there, which he very well might not be. So fantastic pick in the 12th round, Mark. Mike Williams off the board, then Luke Musgrave in the 12th round. Brandon Cooks off the board. Aaron Rodgers on the swing at 1301. Jerry Judy. Off the board at 1302. Sneaky good pick, in my personal opinion. Then Jalen Wright at 1303. Mark, you're back up. Which Jalen Wright, I was hoping was going to fall to me. Just, yeah, an explosive player who, again, whether it's a trade target in the event of injury or somebody that I actually pl plug and play if I need him. Um, again, usually I like to just swing for the fences here, but I'm going to do something I don't typically do. And it's mainly because of who my quarterback is. Kyler Murray, as we all know, he's a little itty bitty baby boy. You know, he, he's been injured <laughs> plenty of times and there is a team who I believe can potentially make and even win the Super Bowl, even over my beloved chiefs. And he has, incredible weapons both on the wide receiver and out of the backfield. So just in case Kyler Murray decides to, you know, not slide or, you know, he gets blindside or something like that. We'll just put Matthew Stafford on there. He's the last of what I would consider the, the startable fantasy quarterbacks. Everybody else is a waiver wire type of pick. I'll just, I'll buy myself some insurance here this late in the draft with a super bowl wing quarterback. Yeah. Love it. I, Love I agree it. with everything you say, except for the he's the last startable one. That is disrespectful to our favorite quarterback in the NFL, Baker Mayfield. I love <laughs> Baker, but let's be honest. He's he's a waiver wire darling. I mean, he he finishes like QB 10 last year, right? Yeah, it was it was up there. It was top. It was definitely top 12. It was definitely top 12. QB 10. I'm just saying, um, you want to start offense I, I or you I'm not disagreeing with you. Stafford's <laughs> significantly better. Like, I, that's <laughs> not. Thank you. <laughs> you know, looking at the board here, there's still, I, I listen now, there's still another running back that I think is going to have value, right? There's actually a couple running backs, three running backs, actually, that I think are going to have value. But like, do I want to go another rookie or do I want to just draft another guy that I think sees a little bit of field right away? Gosh, it's such a tough choice. There's also running, or. Uh, no, I'm going wide receiver. I'm going to take a wide receiver here that Shane loves, that he is going to see the field a lot. He's Tank Dell-esque. I know he gets injured a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and slap that draft or give me Josh Downs for the Ooh. Indianapolis Colts. Uh, who knows what happens, man? I know he was a pretty hot target for AR-15 last year before he went down. Uh, so give me Josh Downs, see what he can do. Kendra yeah, Miller off connection. the board. Yeah, there's a love connection you. between AR-15 and Josh Downs, and yeah, it's peppered targets. It's amazing, but yeah, yeah, the injury is definitely sad. Yes, it is. Kendra Miller off the board at the 1306. Jason, you're back up. Don't do it. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, if you're thinking what I think you're thinking, don't you dare. I don't know if I am thinking what you're thinking, but I'm going to Jahan Dotson right here. Oh, okay, that's I, I like that offense. And I think it's going to be significantly better with Cliff Kingsbury calling the plays. Listen, I really hope I really hope that we see something from Jahan Dotson. He's too talented of a player not to, to do something. 
I, I can't remember what the stat was, but he ran how many yards? That was most in the NFL last year. Mm-hmm. Out of any wide receiver, he most he ran the most most yards or something like that in the <laughs> NFL. So, in. come on, his come on, reception, Jamie, get him the ball. His reception perception is is wild. His lack of success on certain routes and then like uber success on others is just baffling because it's not what you would think for his stature. Uh, right. Now, let me preface this with saying I don't know why I keep doing this, but I keep doing this. There is one player on the a really bad team that is going to get a lot of unique usage and has a lot of versatility. And he is available in the 13th round. And I can plug him into two onesie positions. Let me just go ahead and take yeah, Taysom Hill here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see it's, Mark's it's ugly. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, I have looked at him the last two rounds. I'm like, I'm not going to be that guy. <laughs> I, I have been but that guy recently. Are, a thousand percent I, correct. I it's so ugly. I hate doing it, but every time I get to like this late in a draft and Taysom Hill is staring me in the face, I'm like, why would I not? At this point, there's two onesie positions at once. I don't have to draft another backup for either position. And there's a chance he plays running back and wide receiver this year, too. Like, just let me have let me have my dreams. Uh, he scored a, rush, he scored, he scored a rushing weeks. touchdown. Yeah, yeah. He scored, he scored a rushing touchdown last week's preseason. He's going to be a center point at that offense. I don't understand how he continues to do so, but he is the most relevant, irrelevant player in history. Um, after my pick, Marshawn. I hate Sean, Team or, 10. Team 10? I hate Team 10 because it took Marshawn Lloyd and Ben Sennett, and I really yeah. wanted one of those two to fall to me, so yeah. I'm going to give you the big bird. Team yeah, Marshawn Lloyd, uh, Troy Franklin, who is the sixth wide receiver on Denver's depth chart, uh, Jalen Polk, uh, Kamani Vidal, uh, Ricky Pearsall falling to the 14th round is criminal. Uh, ben Sinnott. Be yep. And then it's me, and I'm going to take. Yeah, let's take wrap my this thing here. up. Yeah, I'm going to take Last my shot. Here. I'm going to take Braylon Allen. I hate handcuffing my own running Son backs. Fuck. <laughs> but that is I the love one. It. That's the love one it. guy no. at this point that I am back in on. Um, his preseason I- has been fantastic. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll handcuff him to Reese, and I'll be okay. I, won't play I love anymore. it. I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love that. I love. It. I was looking uh, at him last round. The, you didn't just snipe the lobby; you collateraled us. <laughs> One <Yeah>. bullet. <laughs> I'm being a homer. All Damian three of Pierce. us. Jamie Ooh, Pierce, Pierce is on the roster Jason. level, by the way. Yeah, I know. That's fun. He's on Jason's roster now. Yeah, I was be, looking at Brady. He could be a Dallas Cowboy. There you go. I was looking at Braylon now in the last round. That's awesome. I love it. Um, okay, I'm back on the clock. My last pick, I'm going to just go ahead and take another wide receiver. Give me Dontavian Wicks. Uh, him yeah, and Jordan Love man. are really, really building a good connection, and I love to see it. He's talent. He's such a talented receiver. So I'm going to take him there in the 14th. Mark, last pick. Yeah, I I had two guys queued. Wicks, Wicks was one of them. Um, so, I mean, I'm backed into this guy. I He's a phenomenal talent. He's been doing good. I just, uh, and Shane actually brought up earlier with his little Falcon stack. I, I think, yeah, a, a large target share is going to London and Pitts. But in the event that Kirk Cousins spreads the ball around, we'll take a week one shot on Mooney and we'll, we'll see what happens. But probably getting cut for a waiver wire pick. <laughs> uh, after he took Mooney, likely Quentin Johnston went to 1411. Then the last pick of the draft, mystery relevant. Mr. Khalil Herbert. Before we wrap up this podcast, though, guys, why don't you go ahead and read off your teams, um, and then we'll end it like that. Mark, why don't you go first? Sure thing. So uh, at the onesie positions, I have Kyler Murray, and uh, backing him up is Matthew Stafford, and then sitting in my tight end spot is Jake Fergie Ferg. Let me love you long time. Uh, We have Isaiah Pacheco, James Cook in the starting positions, but then I also have uh, Javante Williams, Zach Charbonnet uh, backing them up. And then at wide receiver, which is the strongest part of my team, Tyree Kill, Debo Samuel, Tank Dell, Xavier Worthy, Khalil Shakir, Gabe Davis, and Mooney. Jason? Yep. So starters looking like AR, AR, Anthony Rich, I'm going to call it AR 15 again. Anthony Richardson, Travis Etienne, Zamir White, receivers, Amal Ross St. Brown, 
garbage time Mike Evans, Michael Pittman, tight end being David Njoku, and flex being Scary Terry. On the bench, it's Christian Watson, Jerome Ford, Xavier Leggett, Ray Davis, Jahan Dotson, and Damian Pierce. Shane, what you got? All right, so starting quarterback is Jordan Love. Then I got Brees Hall, James Conner, Drake London, DK Metcalf, Malik Neighbors, and then Kyle Pitts at tight end. My flex is currently Tony Pollard. And on the bench, we got oh, Cortland, the land, Sutton, Jamison Williams, Rico Dowdle, Joshua Palmer, um, the man that can do it all, but also is the man of nothing, Taysom Hill, and the handcuff of the century, Braylon Allen. I love it. Um, all right. So on my roster, my starting quarterback, Joe Burrow, Mr. Eminem looking man himself with the blonde hair. Uh, then I have Kenneth Walker and Devin Singletary as my running backs. Uh, the core of my team, obviously, is my receivers. I have Jamar Chase, Nico Collins, Jalen Waddle. Starting tight end, Mr. Dalton Kincaid. In my flex spot, I have Rasheed Rice. Then on the bench, I have BTJ. Chase Brown, Ty Chandler, Tyrone Tracy, Josh Downs, and Mr. Dontavian Wick. Before we wrap this up, though, Mark, give yourself a last plug. Where can everybody find you again uh, to go check out your podcast? Absolutely. Uh, you can find us at the handle ITM Kansas, and you do spell out Kansas, so it's not like KS. So ITM, which stands for in the middle, Kansas. Uh, best place to follow us is on Twitch, though, twitch.tv backslash ITM Kansas. We typically go live Wednesday nights, not this Wednesday because my partner's out of town, uh, but we will have a show next Wednesday. And then the following Wednesday is our big NFL preview show. So if you like uh, this podcast, you should come check us out two weeks from a, well, I guess technically the day before the season starts and hear all of our predictions for the year. Go and check them out, guys. Their podcast has grown over the last couple of years. Uh, Mark is in a league with us three as we speak right now as well. We love having them on the show. Uh, big shout out. and Thank you to fantasy six pack for partnering with the parlay fantasy football podcast. We love you guys over there at F6P member. Go check them out on discord, YouTube. That's where our content, our video is going to be. Uh, on their podcasting platforms and then every podcasting platform you can still find us at the parlay fantasy football podcast give us a like a follow five-star review it really does help the show that being said shane and jason my boys that's gonna wrap it up y'all know what to do khalil herbert wins the award for most likely to be a dallas cowboy wow <laughs> hey mark thank you again for joining us we miss your beautiful face can't wait to draft next week shotguns for number one pick Shotguns for number one pick? No, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all to the moon and back. Until next time, peace out. Bye.